Self Love is the New Sexy, the podcast devoted to helping you overcome life's most painful and stubborn challenges so you can feel great, have more energy, and live stress free every day. To reach your full potential, simply work with the powerful spiritual principles that are readily accessible to everyone. It's easier than you think. And on today's show, W. Mark Watts is going to show you how starting with self-love is the key to joyously and harmoniously making that happen. Hey, everybody, this is W. Mark Watts. Hello, welcome, and thank you for hanging out with me for another episode of Self-Love is the New Sexy. And today's episode is entitled pain leads to power pain leads to power so before i get started i want to give a big shout out i just uh got off of a um, just introductory session with queen maggie and so maggie i want to say thank you for reaching out Uh, i absolutely love connecting with you all so uh, for those of you who want to reach out and connect you can go to my website you'll see a red button on there and you can sign up for just a quick 20 minute session, introductory session where we, you and I can just connect and vibe together, have some fun and spread the love, right? So in that particular call, one of the main topics or the main topic was, you know, how do you know what's, what's that next best thing for you or that right thing for you to do, for you to engage in? And, um, you know, so there's a, a couple or actually there's, a, a plethora of thoughts that come to mind. But the main thing that I want you all to open up to is this, is when you're looking for the answer to a question, regardless of whether it's about self-love or a job or uh, relationships or kids or whatever, we're always connected to the answers. Everything connected. We're, We're connected to every single thing in this world so that is the beauty in and of itself is that we're always connected but we're there's degrees of separation from it so we can we can be connected connected to these things but they can be several levels away and so what we have to do is we have to get through those levels we have to invite those things to meet us until we actually, until they actually become material, until we're actually visualizing them, we're having them in our hands, or we're sitting in them, or we're sitting next to them, and you know, and it's real live in our life, in our daily life. We gotta move through those degrees of separation. So first and foremost, we've got to open ourselves up to that possibility, to the possibility of whatever it is we're thinking about because the mere fact that you had that thought or that desire or that want means that you're already connected to it that it's already yours i forget one of which one of my mentors told me this years ago but they said whatever you want wants you whatever you want also wants you and when you open it up and when you say that when you have those thoughts in your head that means that that thing wants you that person wants you now it might not be the very person that you have in mind but the best representation of that person also is looking for you that job is also looking for you the health that you're looking for is also looking for you the wealth that you're looking for is always also looking for you maybe degrees of separation so how do we get through those degrees of separation i want to give you a couple of exercises that i was given years ago and i've tried them i've experienced them i give them to the clients that i work with i give them out to you guys to play with and experiment with they feel good to you i know they work but i hope that you will give them a try so let's get into those real quick number one is The power of questions. Tony Robbins said it beautifully, and I'm not going to butcher up what he said, but essentially what he said is the more, the better quality question you ask, 
the better the results and the faster you get the results as well. So number one is you have to make that quiet time and you have to simply ask the universe, God, the divine spirit, whatever you call the higher power in this world, ask, what is it that I should be doing, that I should have, that I should pursue, that I should connect with, that I house it, I should serve. Any variation of that question or those questions are typically on our minds at any given time, right? We, all, we always have a couple of questions, heartfelt questions going on in our minds at any given time. Ask those questions specifically to the universe. Whether they be silent, you ask them silently. I found it's actually a little more powerful if you say them out loud. So you have that quiet time, that one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. When you have that time to yourself, ask those questions, listen, and then get quiet, right? Then get quiet. Listen, see what comes in, what particular colors you see. Do you see any kind of signs? Do you hear anything? Do you hear voices? Do you hear birds? You know, what kind of vibration are you getting? Jot that down. I use my phone a lot. I don't like to really handwrite notes. I like to use my phone. It's more powerful if you write it down, but I use my phone. So I type it into my phone and I keep them. And I consistently ask that question, those questions. And I start to look for patterns. So sometimes it'll be loud and clear right away. You'll hear those things, those answers for you. And you can jot those down. And then those are the things that you think about. I run it through my spirit. So I'll say the answer and then get a feel, a gut feel. How does it really feel in my body? And if you need to rate it from zero to 10 with 10 being an absolute yes, zero being an absolute no. And jot that down. And anything over a six or seven, that's a definite avenue to pursue. That's definitely something you're connected with. So give that some serious thought. Then the other thing, the second thing, and I'm going to get out of here on this one because this one was so powerful, so powerful for me. Years ago, I was in some tough spots. I had, had been chewed out when the, um, the economy tanked. I was, had to, I was switching uh, professions. I was looking for answers, trying to figure things out. Didn't have any money and wanted a new car. And so I, as I, and I, that was around the same time that I was led to my first mentor, Mr. Joe Schroeder, the great Joe Schroeder. And one night, uh, did, again, during one of our numerous meetings, he offered this exercise to me. And when he first told me, I thought he was absolutely crazy. I'm like, what is Joe talking about? And Joe was a different type of guy, very successful, very smart, very in tune with himself, a very loving guy, but he didn't take any mess. So he offered this up. He said, okay, if you want that new car, you want a new car, then you've got to think like that car thinks in order to have that car. And I thought, what? Are you serious? A car thinks? And, you know, I was beyond the point of really questioning him because, again, this guy is very successful. He's taking the time to offer me exercises uh, and he explains things in detail. And so much of the things, the principles that he had been teaching me started over time to make sense and, and things had started to work, work for me. So I thought, OK, the least that I could do is try. Right. Because here's the deal. I don't have the car right now. As Dr. Fields says, how are the things that you're doing so far working out for you? So I thought, OK, I don't have anything to lose. I don't have the car right now. The car that I have, I, I don't really want anymore. I want to make more money so that I can afford the car that I want. So I'll give it a try. So I gave it a try. And I started, I asked the questions, you know, in my quiet downtime, before I would go to sleep, when I wake up in the morning, I'd say, what does the car that I want, what is that thinking? What is that car thinking? 
And how do I have to think in order to have the car that I want to have? Now, again, be specific because the universe likes specificity. So, you know, figure out what color you want, the interior, you know, two-door coupe or a sedan, you know, sunroof. You know, get specific. Get that picture in your mind. And then you ask, what does it, what is that car thinking and how do I have to think in order to possess that car. And then just, again, be open to what comes up. Do this over time. Repetition is king and queen and everything. Repetition, over time, you will get those answers. You will have those thoughts. The universe will connect you with the thoughts. Once you get the thoughts, now then, because sometimes people say, Mark, that doesn't work. Well, did you work the plan? So once you get those ideas and those thoughts, did you take action on those thoughts until you had the end result that you wanted? Uh-oh, I'm going to step on some toes now because now I just made you responsible for the end result. And that's the challenge is we don't want to be responsible all the time for achieving the things that we want. We want them just to be to just come to us magically, right? We just, you know, wake up one morning and boom, there it is. But no, we have a huge role in this. So open yourself up, ask the questions, take the notes when you get the responses, and then take the action until you receive what you want in your life. It's not very hard, it's a simple process, but you have to follow it to a T and you have to be diligent. You have to be focused and you cannot let anybody talk you out of it. You can't let society dictate it. You've got to be laser focused on it if you want it and you can have it. All right. So I'm at my limit and I can feel the thoughts are just starting to come because there's so much more I want to share but I want to keep it nice and short and sweet. Just those two things. Quiet time, open up and focus and ask the questions. And then ask good quality questions. Take down the notes, the answers, and then take that action toward that thing. Ask a specific question. What does that particular car think and feel like? What is it thinking? And then how do I have to think in order to possess it? All right. I'm going to be gone now. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me. Again, big shout out to Queen Maggie. Total, total pleasure speaking with you tonight. I look forward to speaking with you all and connecting with more of you online. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. I absolutely love your comments. And continue to hang out with me. Got a lot of good stuff coming. I'll talk with you all again very soon. Bye now. You've been listening to Self Love is the New Sexy with W. Mark Watts. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Also, make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you listen to podcasts.